My friend Troy Mansfield, the owner of Winoga Lodge, invited me on a September moose hunt. He drew a bull tag and offered to gift me a cow tag. While I've been on my share of flying fishing trips, this was a trip of firsts for me. My first moose hunt and my first flying hunting trip. I'm still so green to the world of hunting and the anticipation leading up to this trip was so high. While I realized no hunting trip is ever a guarantee, our hopes were set on coming face to face with a moose of Northern Ontario. Guys, welcome to Winoga Lodge. We're kind of just in the parking lot here, but uh, I haven't been here for like probably eight or nine years. Last time I was here was with Mr. Aaron Weeb and we were filming a musky show with a guy named Troy Mansfield, the owner of Winoga. Had a great time. Troy and I became friends, stayed in contact afterwards. And uh, Winoga has amazing fishing outposts all over the place. They've got an island lodge, they've got mainland cabins, but yes, as I mentioned, they have some amazing hunting opportunities. And, and when Troy and I were talking over the years, he would send me some moose pictures and said, hey, if you ever want to come film a moose hunt, I'd love to bring you along. So finally the stars aligned and we're doing it. It's the end of September. We're just getting packed up, running last couple errands and we're going to be headed to the float plane base shortly. We got Brandon along. I'm going to introduce you to the crew and we're going to be flying probably in like half an hour. Our plane took off from a small float plane base in Sioux Lookout, Ontario, and after a stunning flight, we arrived at our base camp for the week. Oh, it's Big Troy. Troy, tell me about yourself. Oh, man. <laughs> I put you on the spot. Yeah, you did. I'm a third generation outfitter and guide. Yeah, there you go. Grew up doing this. Wow, so you've been on a couple moose hunts. Just a few. Here's the other half of the team. Oh, hello. Mr. Bailey. The Bailster. Uh, what's your role? My role? Yeah. Jack of all trades. Yeah, he is helping with everything. There you <laughs> go. And we got Brandon. Brando. There. So that's the one we want, Troy? Something like that? Yeah, that's definitely something. That's the dream? That's the dream right there. How big is that? Mid 50s, big, giant, I don't know, giant. Okay, so question for you, Troy. Yeah. What is it, uh, so there's a 50 inch muskie is the target for muskie fishermen. What is it for a moose hunter? 50 inches. Is 50 about, is it's the about, same? It's about the same equivalent of what you want to reach. We're looking through the photo album here at the outpost. And there's some big walleyes. And some big pike. Are these big pike in here too? Yeah, they were. Oh. Wow, that's big. I mean, everyone I talk to says that, you know, sh shooting the moose is like 20% of the work and the 80% is actually bringing it out of the bush. So I'm ready. I'm ready for the pain. I'm ready for some physical fitness. Moose hunting is all new to me. Um, and I'm not good at getting up early. So hopefully that's not a, a big factor. We can sleep in, right? <laughs> <laughs> that is the thing about hunting versus fishing is you can still get away fishing sleeping in a lot of the time hunting you can't really get away sleeping in hunting I've, I've just seen that too many times so yeah we're gonna have a little a little chat with the boys shortly i'm gonna ask them a lot of dumb questions we shot a moose out the canoe yeah i had a hunter named kurt shoot a moose there man i had him shoot a moose there i had kurt shoot a moose there <laughs> i had kurt shoot him so the whole lake Okay, so <laughs> what were you saying about the moose? What what wind direction do we want? If we were going to go into this lake, we'd want a north wind. And, and right, because we'd be on this shoreline, right? So our scent would be blowing onto the lake and not into the woods, and the moose would come into the calm part of the lake. And the moose will favor the wind, the wind to the, behind them. The wind to their back. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whatever the wind is, we'll check the weather here tonight, and uh, in the morning, really, is what will dictate which way we go. But a moose will go out to twenty feet of water, and they'll dive down and they'll eat. Like a moose, no. can, a moose can yeah. dive down twenty feet. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, majority of their vegetables. You know, I feel like you're messing with me. No, <laughs> no, I've seen it, no. so I ain't making it up. They'll dive down. 20 feet. Yep. No, yep. I don't believe that. <laughs> <Well>. <laughs> That's unbelievable. It really is. 
I guess every situation is a little bit different as far as decoy goes. Like, okay, what's what's your game plan right now? Like, if, if you had to... If it's a south wind, we might get, we're probably going to go down to the river. Yeah. And... And then as soon as you see one, are you going straight into shore, parking, setting up for a shot, and then calling them towards you? Depending. Okay. There might, might not be enough time to do that. Might be We might paddle around the corner. You might be standing. Yeah, it and, might be 50 yards, like, going around the corner. And can you shoot while paddling? Yes. Oh, you can? Yes. The but connect, there can't be a motor on there? Correct. Motor has to be t detached from the boat. Okay. So you might take the motor to go a long distance, take it off, and then we paddle and have... Yep. Yep. I don't have the trolling motor on while we're actually, like, traveling. Not okay. engaging in hunting, right? So I just use it for transportation and take it off. You know, it's nice to have cooler mornings. Um, we're going to have a few days where it's going to get pretty warm. But uh, usually the moose will still be active right away in the morning, but it'll just shut them down earlier. Yeah. And then they probably just become more active in the afternoon or late evening again, depending on the weather. Yeah. I can't wait. I'm going to just lose my mind. What, uh, when sunrise? Set the alarm for 1030? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to moose camp, to moose season, to opening morning of my first moose hunt ever. The one thing that Troy told me when we planned this trip, he said, get hip boots. I'm like, what are hip boots? Hip boots are essentially like waders that stop at your hips. They're boots with this extension. And when I told my wife, Sam, that I needed to get these boots for the trip, she's like, Jay, you have like four pairs of boots. Why do you need these boots? And I'm like, Troy, do we really need these? He's like, yes, get the hip boots. So we got the hip boots. They're pretty sexy. There we go. Hip boots, pretty much guaranteed a moose now. I think we're heading to the far south end of the lake and I'm sure we're gonna learn lots today and maybe see a moose. I don't even know. I, I, it'd be pretty crazy to get it done the first morning, but I have no expectations. So I'm, I'm mentally prepared to do this for seven days straight without even seeing a moose. So anything will be a bonus. Yo, Troy, what time is it? Uh, about 6.15. You're supposed to say, moose time. It is moose time. Are you pumped? Is this like Christmas morning for you? This is better than Christmas morning. Man. <laughs> Look at that, There's we, we found a moose already. Okay. When I envisioned moose hunting, it was everything this morning was. Up before the sunrise, crisp fall temperatures, thick fog over the water, and wading at the edge of a big swampy bay. We're probably gonna sit here for a little bit, you know, just kind of wait, see if anything's moving naturally. Every so often I'll give out a few cold calls and just listen to see if anything responds. It's opening day, you know, it's early, a little pre-rut, but it's, you know, about the time where the magic starts happening. But you don't want to overcall. Overcall and overpressure the animal, right? It's sometimes more is less. Or I'm sorry, sometimes less is more. <laughs> <laughs> 10 minutes you said we'll go? Yeah. Check some trail cams? Yeah. Trail yeah. cams have been out for how long you said? Six weeks? Two, yeah. yeah. Two months, six weeks. Well, longer than six, but last time we were in here. Was... Can you put some apples out for them? 
Pineapple. Pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's a nice bowl. Ooh. Look at that velvet bowl. Wow. Some calves. That's that little forker. That's a nice bowl. Yeah, two bulls. Are they sparring friendly? <laughs> Aw. Little friendly sparring. You think those are the ones we heard? Yep. I think yeah. so, yeah. I mean, yeah. Makes sense. It's literally the story we heard this morning. Yeah. Right. Nice. That's obviously a moose track, Troy. Is can you tell if it's a bull or a cow based off of that? Probably a bull. See these right here? That indention? Dew claws off the back of a hoof. It's usually hmm. from a heavier animal that makes that. Interesting. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of tracks in here. I know. <laughs> I know you want to do this always. <laughs> <laughs> Season opener in the zone we were hunting coincides with the beginning of the rut, aka moose mating season. The ability to call these animals at this time of year, in my mind, is one of the pinnacles of big game hunting. While I hadn't experienced it myself, I just got goosebumps thinking about one of these encounters. After our morning sit, we checked a few trail cams, and we could tell that we were definitely in the right area. <laughs> What's the plan, guys? We're gonna go for a canoe ride down a river. A beautiful river, majestic river. It's pretty majestic. Fantastic. Super safari, here we come. I've heard it's called Moose River. Moose, moose river. river. Is that true? It's called a lot of Moose River. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of Moose River. <laughs> We're back for the evening session, and uh, yeah, I guess uh, normally you take a little midday break and then you get ready for for sunset. Just like, just like musky fishing, sunrise, sunset are kind of the key times. So. We're doing something a little different, and I'm pretty excited to get in a canoe. Hopefully, do not fall out. We're all we're all good. Well, we are parking the boats. And we're going stealth. There's a canoe stashed here, and that's going to be our next mode of transportation. That is the biggest canoe I've ever seen. You can put a moose in there. <laughs> you can put an adult moose and a cat in there. Wow. I see a moose. <laughs> Troy and Bailey had described the river accurately. It was nothing short of magical. Although I'm a rookie in all things hunting, this was by far the moosiest looking place I'd ever seen. We piled our way downstream for a few kilometers and then turned around to start making our way back. As we got to a narrow spot in the river, I noticed a fresh set of tracks along the river bank. At that point, we stopped paddling and Troy began to call. After a few seconds, we started to hear some branches cracking in the bush. My heart was about to pound out of my chest. Then the moose stepped out. At first we were unable to tell if it was a cow or a small bull. With myself being the only one in the crew with a cow tag, Trey told me to get ready. Once we got a better look as he stepped out, we realized it was a young bull. This wasn't the moose Troy was looking for. We sat there and just admired this beautiful creature standing 50 yards in front of us.
Look at that hair. Turn sideways. <laughs> Float. Here we go, day two. Wear your life jackets. The previous evening had me fired up. I came into this trip knowing the possibility of not even seeing a moose at all. Encountering one that close the first evening had already made my trip. I couldn't wait for what was next. That morning we headed back to the river to see if there was more moose activity. As we rounded the corner, we saw the first cow moose of the trip. Unfortunately, she was on the wrong side of the river, meaning this moose was just outside of the area we could harvest a moose. Welcome back to camp to the outpost. Thought this would be a great time to give you guys a tour of this, uh, this pretty sweet location. So they use this obviously as a hunting outpost in the fall for moose, but also I'm told there's some really good walleye fishing and pike fishing in this lake, which hopefully we get a sample yet this trip. But you know, obviously the moose is the focus, but you can see got a fleet of boats and here's the main lodge, secondary cabin. This is where Bailey and Troy are staying in. Back there, you got the shower shack. There's a generator running back there. There's a moose cooling uh, like shed, a giant walk-in cooler they use. So, you know, on a day like today, it's like plus 25 Celsius. If we were to get a moose, we would need to put it in that cooler right away, which is, you know, a very nice asset to have. Deep fryer, barbecue, and let's go inside. Here is the main cabin and it is beautiful dining area there's upstairs with two beds one bedroom over there two beds so much storage this is brandon's room just give you a little peek yeah like look at this kitchen this is perfect propane fridge stove just missing just missing the dishwasher but um yeah this is this is a pretty sweet cab and i was expecting to be roughing it a little bit more but uh that's what we're looking for oh look at this nicely stocked with fish batter as well this moose hunting is long days, but uh, I don't know, it's, it just, it gets you up early for these beautiful mornings. Uh, some weather's supposed to roll in. I think the storm's supposed to come in tonight. Tomorrow's supposed to be just a downpour, so we'll see how that affects things. And then it's supposed to get cold. So I think talking to the guys, that will probably be when the moose activity picks up. But I mean, we've seen moose, you know, or had close encounters like every, every session we've gone out. So that's all I got for you. We will see you guys a little bit later, maybe after I take a nap. That's what we're dealing with. A little bit of weather. Yeah. The, the weather changed big time. This is oh gonna yeah, be... this is like the, the, the stall between the wind, the wind, the front's coming, right? We yeah. just finished with the south wind, now it's gonna turn to the north it's shifting. this afternoon, yeah. We were gonna go fishing, now we're going back to the magical, mystical Moose Creek, we're gonna call it. I don't know if it actually has a name, but uh, every time we've been there, we've seen some moose activity, so I'm happy. We can fish afterwards, but getting the moose's priority. So I want to see a big bull come out in front of Troy. That's the dream. Wouldn't you guess it, the moment we made it back down Moose Creek, the skies opened up again. And not in a good way, a downpour. It might not have been ideal for hunting conditions, but it certainly made for some epic footage of Troy.
Well, we are back from the rain. It was like such a tease when it was nice and calm and like brightening outside and then we went out and we should have checked the radar. Um, but yeah, we got poured on. It felt moosey, but it just, just didn't happen, but that's okay. Um, we're on kind of a different schedule now. We just came back from hunting, it's four o'clock, so we are gonna experience, sample the walleye fishing here and uh, catch some dinner. So I'm looking forward to it and hopefully cameras don't get too wet. Going fishing. So something I love to pack for flying trips like this is a little portable kit. I got a little ammo box from Princess Auto. Got the Dakota Lithium inside. This is a Helix 7. I just like it because it has auto, auto charting capabilities, which means it creates a map as you drive. So this lake, we don't know much about, but as we drive, it'll create a map. And you know, you might see some humps as you're driving or you know, extended reef, something like that. So anyways, got this portable bracket and we're gonna attach it on the back and go do some driving around. We talked to Troy, he pointed out a couple spots to try near the camp. The entire lake in this guy fishes right beside us. All right, we're doing it. Pink jig, and we're gonna use a gulp minnow. I think the guys have live minnows here as well, but I like to bring these gulp minnows kind of wherever I go, just as backup if there isn't bait. And there you have it. Oh, there's a fish right there. Let's see how long this takes. I'm told the walleye fishing's good here. Warm fish sounds just so good right now. Mm. Oh, and we're on. Does not feel big, but it is our first walleye. And that is gonna taste just fine. You know, you could bring live minnows, but this gulp definitely does the trick. So this guy's coming home with us. This is what gives me the confidence to stay here is those nice, nice marks, 18, 19 feet. These lakes are just so chocked full of walleye since there's just no pressure on them, so. Oh, that was just instant. Are we gonna catch bigger? Yeah, we're gonna catch bigger. <laughs> Change into a jigging style bait, flat wrap I think it's called. I guess we'll see. Oh wow. That was instant. Get in the boat. Nom, 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 nom. Absolutely delicious after a cold day out on the water. This is actually probably the closest I've caught to a blue walleye. Look at that blue tinge in there. That's, that's pretty cool. Troy was telling me they're kind of blue in here. There we go. Ooh, that's a nice one. Oh boy, that one's too big to eat. That is sweet. This guy we're gonna put back. So I'm using a seven and a half foot medium light. It helps keep the fish pinned. You just lose a lot of fish on these jigging wrap style baits. 10 pound braid, 12 pound fluoro. We got him. Might be dinner. Feeling like dinner. That's dinner. All right. I think we got enough for uh, a nice fish fry. I think this is our biggest one yet. Had to catch a couple more. And uh, wow, these fish are thick. Nicest walleye yet, big, perky, and such a beautiful fish. All right. I am so excited to go into a warm cabin with a nice fire going in there. Look at this place. Like, how sweet is this? When I think of moose hunting, I think of living in a wall tent and being wet for 10 days. We are gonna go dry out, eat some fish, get ready for tomorrow.
Well guys, it is day five, I think, at Moose Camp. Five of seven. And uh, yesterday, didn't really see any activity. We got a drop in temperature again. Nice calm, foggy morning. This is like, this is what I picture. This is very similar to the first morning where we had those moose calling back. So headed to a place called Cow Bay. And uh, I, I have a cow tag, so this might be a good place to uh, harvest my first cow. Obviously there could be bulls there as well. But just look at this morning. Sometimes it's tough when you get to bed at midnight and get up at four, but uh, this kind of makes it worth it. We've got Bailey on the back running the trolling motor. Yeah, what a morning. I always try to keep a positive attitude even if it feels like conditions aren't ideal. But this morning, conditions did feel ideal. Temperature had dropped and the wind was non-existent. This, this was a moosey morning. Where's that in Cow Bay? This is like the moosiest feeling morning yet. Thick fog, a lot of dew on all the branches. And uh, a lot of coffee running through my veins right now. The anticipation was building as Troy had a bull calling from across the bay. The question was, could we get it to walk out towards us and break through the fog? Troy began hitting branches with his paddle to mimic another bull. Once again the moose eluded us, but that's just how it goes sometimes. And as I experienced a new type of hunting, it's easy to compare it to past hunting experiences I've had. And over the week, I came to love the communal aspect of moose hunting. While we had the excitement that a big critter could walk out at any moment, we were also able to share laughs and stories as a group while we were waiting. Well, what I lack in moose hunting skills, well, maybe we'll make up for in walleye catching skills. We'll see, we'll see. For a little, we are going fishing for a little afternoon session. Gonna catch some walleyes for dinner. And we're going down the lake, we're going to a new spot that uh, Troy told us about. An inflow of a river and apparently it's loaded with walleyes. So, we got like two hours. Like the nicest weather we've had yet. Yeah, we get to set that up. Just feeling it. We're on a fish. Is it a cisco? Is it a perch? Is it a lake trout? Is it a pike? 
or is it a blue walleye? Apparently they get even more blue in the winter time, Troy was saying, to the point that when he lays them on the snow, it actually turns the snow blue. Kind of crazy. Oh, wow. That fish just crushed it. Whew. Look at that big, beautiful walleye. I like this. Ooh, there we go. There you go. On these chicken style baits, I like to have a little clip on top, and it just gives it a little more, a little more movement. It's easy to switch baits, but you know, tying it straight. I, I don't often use clips like that, but for jigging wraps, I've started doing it, and it definitely seems to give the bait a little more movement. I just marked a waypoint the first time I saw, you know, a cluster of more than one fish, and just consistently every time I come back to that waypoint, there's just fish hanging around it. It could be the transition from the mud to the rock, but sometimes there's just like a spot on a spot because I'm not marking them everywhere. There we go, golden beauties. Average size is like, yeah, 17 inches. Sweet. It wasn't a surprise to me, but the walleye fishing was absolutely top notch and certainly a great way to break up the day and provide some amazing fresh meat for dinner. But I still couldn't stop thinking about that moose encounter from the first night. We only had a few days left and I knew at any moment we could round the corner and see the animal we'd been waiting for. Fun little afternoon session. That was the best fishing yet. We got Bailey over here, still catching him. Oh, look at that timing. We didn't end the day with a moose, but we're gonna end the day with a fish fry. Walleye fishing is pretty easy on this lake and we're doing a little catch and cook with, you guessed it, catch and cook. And uh, we, got, we got a little pile of meat here and uh, we're gonna be eating a bunch tonight, save some for some fish sandwiches on the water or shore tomorrow. Nothing beats fresh walleye. here. Ooh! Thank you. Good way to end the day. You got your potatoes, you got your fish, and we got some beans and some salad. Unreal. Unreal. Thanks to Chef Bailey making this happen. That looks good! It is last day. Morning just feels likely to, to make it happen. I, I have good vibes in the evening, but morning just feels really good. Wind from the southwest? Southeast. southeast. Tiny Troy, they call him. Troy's cell phone, actually, whenever he got registered with his cell phone provider, they punched him in his Big Troy. So when you get a phone call, it's like, who's Big Troy? Well, this is Big Troy. <laughs> feeling moosey. I'd received a crash course in moose hunting over the week. I can't say I'd now feel confident to go out on a solo moose hunt, but I now understand some of the basics of moose behavior. I knew however this trip ended, it wouldn't be my last time I'd be moose hunting. And I was already discussing plans with Troy to come the following season, regardless of the outcome. Another session without any activity, but I knew we still had one last chance that evening. We gotta go. Are we rolling? Yeah, we're rolling. We gotta go. We gotta go. We're portaging into a lake. We haven't been there yet. The wind's right for it. They tell us they get moose every time they go there. Typical guide holding out the last day. I'm just kidding. I, I'm, a, I'm an ex-guide. I know how it is. They don't hide the best. Anyways, we're going to a portage lake. Uh, I just love seeing new spots, so I'm excited for it, and anything you want to add? 
I'm excited for it. The He's wind, excited. The, the wind's right for it. We haven't been there all week. Shoo wee! Forgot my seven up. All right. Oh my. Oh no. <laughs> they leave without it. <laughs> It's a disaster! No! Now it's shook! <laughs> well, we're stripping down the layers because it is warm. I expected moose hunting to be frosty and cold and just chattering teeth the whole time and they brought me on a tropical vacation. Anyways, uh, they checked the trail cam from the spot we sat this morning, which is also the spot we sat the first morning, and there was a bull on camera. So that's a good sign that there's mooses moving around. Sorry, mice is plural? Meese? 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 I think it's just moose. South is. So we're relying on moose to come up from this direction or from over here? Yeah. So the wind's blowing this way at us. Is that okay? I mean, still, yeah, it's still hunted. It's good. All right, we're doing it. We're doing yeah. it. We're thought about maybe not doing it, but we're doing it. We'll do it. We're doing it. We'll do it. Lake Brandon, we're calling it. Brando Lake. <laughs> it's only because I've seen the river so many times. I hate that river. I'm starting to get mad at that river. <laughs> we call it Mooseless River. Mooseless River. once in a while when you're around Troy. Kind of always steals the show. Well, we didn't get a moose. I knew it wouldn't be easy, and I was right. But all that being said, I don't think harvesting such a beautiful animal like that should be easy. I think if I'm fortunate enough to notch my moose tag next year, it'll be that much sweeter. Wouldn't you have guessed it though, four days after leaving camp, Troy and Bailey went back in to try to fill Troy's bull tag. On their first day, they were able to call out the giant that we'd seen earlier on the trail cam. Troy got it done. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit jealous that we couldn't be along for it, but I couldn't be more happy for Troy and Bailey to see all their hard work pay off. Troy and Bailey, thank you so much for sharing your little piece of paradise with me and Brandon, and I can't wait to come back. Until next year. <laughs>